Okay, I'm back. You know, I love my kids, but boy, I tell you, sometimes, whew, and get up all in your hair and cause you all kinds of grief. Anyway, um, but that's their job, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, like I said, back to this initial stage, or initial watering in for my transplants. This is what they will get for the initial water. It's just basically just to get something in the soil, something they can chew on and give the roots a little boost, that kind of thing. Like I said, break the surface tension on the cocoa for the first time. That kind of thing. That way I don't have to worry about uh, watering issues or air pockets or dry spots, that kind of thing. This takes care of that. So, now, this aside. Now, when I'm feeding in veg, where is it? Well, I forgot a jug. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Hang on. Okay. Okay. Now, in veg, pre-veg, this is what I use for my grow nutrients. Age-old organics. Um, this is uh, completely organic. It's um, for an or I think for an organic, it's a little strong, but that's okay, though. Uh, I've learned how to use it. No big deal. But I do know chemical fertilizers, from my experience, have a tendency to be stronger than the organics. Um, so for my vegetative and my initial flowering newts i will use these organics so i mix both of both i use the best of both worlds i use both organics and uh chemicals okay you can tell by the liquid karma here that's a, that's an organic um so anyway then i also use kelp okay now someone's gonna ask me what do i use kelp for well i use kelp for three different reasons i use it for helping to build the tilth in my soil Plus, it has major uh, major nutrients in it, so it do it does two things in that particular respect. And number three, I use this as a foliar feed mixed with the cocoa. I use that as a foliar feed. Okay, so that's what that is. So age-old organics grow kelp, and also use Liquid Karma in the uh, pre-veg stage and in vegetative stage. Okay great stuff okay and of course use it I, I i i could sit here and tell you guys all day long how much to put in this and how much to put in that but every variety is a little bit different and some can take newts more than others and that so i can't tell everybody how to specifically use any particular nutrient all i can tell you is how i use it okay and the results i get when i use it okay liquid karma I very rarely, uh, it has um, three or four, it's got like three or four different strengths here. I very rarely go over 10 mils to the gallon with this stuff. Because um, I just, it's just not needed. Just not needed. Especially in veg state. Um, especially, uh, well in the veg state when you're using a bunch of this other stuff. Like I said, um, I might mix those three together. Okay. Um, or I might mix those three together. Okay. When I have plenty of this, I don't even use this in veg. I use this in flower now. I'll only use this in uh, pre-veg if the plants are big. Okay. And this is just to help them get a boost on taking care of some of the younger roots that have died off. And now they're making bigger roots, that kind of thing. Um, that's hygrazine. Okay. And I've never used over 10 mils of the gallon on this. Okay. So there you have that on that. Let's move some things and move on along here. And I know somebody's going to ask about this funny little blue and white bottle I got sitting off to the side here that I haven't mentioned anything about. And someone dissed me about it here not too long ago. And I'm guess what? I'm going to diss him right back because he's wrong. See that right there? Oxidizer. Now, if your roots need oxygen and you put oxygen in your water, it's not going to kill off your beneficials someone said this kills your beneficials well it will kill your beneficials if you put in too much right on the back it says right here dilute three mils per four liters of water add the nutrient tank every three to five days why it evaporates out of the water like oxygen and chlorine and stuff like that but this stays in the water longer it oxygenates the water so your roots can get more oxygen. If you have more oxygen in your root zone, 
It'll also help to keep your bugs at bay. What do fungus gnats like most? And root maggots and all that? No oxygen in the root zone. They thrive on no oxygen in the root zone because everything rots and breaks down when there's no oxygen in the root zone. I recommend use this sparingly. Use it exactly as directed. It will burn your skin. I found out, not necessarily a hard way, but the very first time I used this, I had a little splash on my hand. Yeah, my arm went into the water fast. Um, it did burn a little bit, but it didn't like leave a scar or anything like that. It just irritated the skin because I washed it off real quick. But being it's at 29% versus roughly the, what is it, 3% you get at the grocery store or something like that that you put in? Yeah, be careful on that. When I add this, I add it to that, but I don't go the full amount. And if I use it in veg, I don't go the full amount either. I'll do like, uh, it says the three mils of the gallon. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll fill a bucket to four and a half gallons of water and I'll put in 12 milliliters of this. So I'll base it for four gallons. That way I get the oxidizer in there for the roots, but it's not so strong I have to worry about killing off all my beneficials. Get it? Okay. So don't tell me I'm wrong, people. After I've been at this for over two years, don't, don't go there. I'll be the first one to rip you a new asshole. And there's other growers out there. Be, uh, there's other growers out there that just don't even give a shit about you people that say that kind of crap and won't even listen to you. They just kind of turn you off and go away. Um, I, for one, I don't go out there looking for a fight, but if you bring the fight to my doorstep, I'm going to stand up and beat the fucking crap out of you. So um, that's verbally or figuratively speaking. But if you get in my face and want to fight, come on, let's take it. But you get the idea. So let's not go there. We don't need to go there. It's, it's, just, it's just a figure of speech you, so you get the idea. <clears throat> so as I go through my products here now, um, as all of you know from my flowering videos, I am now using Fox Farm Nutrients on my flowering grow as we step into flowering now. Um, these are all the powdered, okay? I do not like their liquid bloom fertilizer. It's a two-part. I do not like it. It's... Uh, way too chemically it jacks the shit out of your ppms and i don't like the results i get from it so right back to age old organics i'm mixing organics with chemicals it's okay you can do this all day long if you want there's no problem with it i just like the performance of this age old organics bloom i okay oh also in a video a while back i stated the uh the uh the numbers on this or the new strength on this I call it 1266. Uh, 1266 is the grow. This is 5105. Okay? So I've got some room. So I use this as my base for my flowering. That way it's only got one part. And actually, this 5105, if you take the two Fox Farm nutrients and put them together, this is actually stronger. But this doesn't spike the hell out of my PPMs. The difference between organics and chemical fertilizers. Okay? But like I said, I've always gotten good results with this. this. Is what I was recommended in the beginning, so I'm going to stick with this. Uh, no sense in changing something you get good results with. Okay. Then of course, I love the results I'm getting from these products from Fox Farm this time. I'm only in day 38. I'm going to do a video tonight. You guys got to see. I'm not the the buds haven't even swollen yet. I got also. I swear to God, somebody dipped my buds in powdered sugar. Now, I think that's also because I'm adding another nutrient. And I do it in a gallon jug because i got to use so much of it. But candy! This was a recommendation from guess who, guys? Coma. Yeah, Coma. Now, if you go back and watch, if any of you have been watching Coma for any length of time, there's a, a list of videos, or there's some videos out there before his channel got taken down, and I wish you assholes would just leave him alone. He's a killer grower. Um... He told everybody, he put out videos on how to get two pounds, or was it a pound, I think, out of a thousand watt light, and how to get the heavy trikes, I mean, real big trikes and, and everything on your plants like he does. He tells you guys how to do that out there. I listened, okay? Bud Candy. Um, what's happening? See this? Cha-ching. Cha-ching is for your essential oils, for your trikes, to get it to put out more trikes, right? Well, that's one thing. But you got to feed her. Well, the soil, that is. got to put this stuff in there so the plant... These are your sugars, okay? 
This is your sugars. This is just more nutrients. It's all it is. It's phosphate, all that kind of stuff, but I don't see any sugars in it. Iron, magnesium, zinc, that kind of stuff. There's no sugars. No sugars. Got to give them sugars. Got to give them sugars. This stuff is, pretty, is very, very beneficial. It boosts the trike output, or they call it um, the bricks content. <coughs> Excuse me. The bricks. That would be the amount of essential oils that the plant puts out is called the bricks level. You want to raise that bricks level as high as you can. You want to get as many trikes out there. So go, yeah. The more trikes, the more medicine. So, bud candy. Like I said, I'm using Fox Farm. I'm happy with the results I'm getting. Now, is there anything out there better? I don't know. I haven't tried anything outside of age-old organics until this grow. I wanted to make sure I had this all down pat before I stepped it up and went to something else. That way, I could watch how this is working. I already know how to use my nutrients. And when I change something up, you got to got to watch that kind of thing. Okay? So, also in flour, I've added something else based on a, another grower's suggestion. And the reason why is because the composition of it's a little bit different than everything else I'm using. Now, you're supposed to use this all the time, but I only used it one time, and this was this very last feeding. I wanted to give my plants a boost. Humboldt County's own Snor Snowstorm Ultra. Now, this stuff is strong. you got to be careful with these Humboldt, own, Humboldt County's own nutrients. This is nothing more than a potassium supplement. That's all it is. Okay. But if I'm adding all this other stuff, then I got to be careful how much of this I add. So you watch those PPMs and that'll that'll help. So anyway, um, and actually you don't use very much of this stuff at all. But just a it's a, just a straight up potassium supplement. Okay. So on to on to some more. Now, pH issues. We all have them. We all have our own ideas on how we fix these pH issues. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. One more item, one more item. For flowering, instead of using liquid karma, liquid karma is for vegetative. Nirvana is specially designed for bloom, okay? So I also use Nirvana. As you can see, it's also a slight potassium supplement. But this is a, um, you know, they call it a flower booster, but it's um, actually what it is. Because it's earthworm castings, humus, seaweed extract, and alfalfa meal. It's liquid compost. Okay? But it's designed for flour. Okay? And it says also cocoa koi are safe. So that is the um, uh, basically liquid karma for flour. Okay? Growth accelerator, compost, whatever you want to call it. And now uh, back over to the pH issues. Like I said, we all have them. And we all have problems you got to deal with, flushing, all that kind of stuff. I have switched what I use for my pH now. Um, it wasn't on a recommendation. It was just something I saw somebody use. I wanted to try it. And I couldn't find a small enough container, so I bought a whole goddamn quart of it. And boy, am I glad I did. This does not jack with my PPMs like the powdered pH down from General Hydroponics. Now, I used, I've used that for like two years now, and I've had good results with it. But one thing I always noticed is it jacked the hell out of my PPMs. So I always had to be really careful on how much I added. If I was in this big barrel and I added a whole entire tablespoon or basically 15 mil or whatever tablespoon to the, the mix and my pH didn't move, if I added another one and the pH went down just a little bit, it would jack the hell out of my PPMs. So I would have to stop. I wouldn't be able to push my PPMs down or my pH down where I wanted to because the PPMs were too damn high. So this does not jack with the PPMs like the crystal powdered stuff does. But it's also very strong. You only need an eyedropper and drop, 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 drop of this stuff. Um, I might use 5 milliliters for a whole 30 gallon, 30 to 32 gallon barrel. Now this last time I fed, I got all the nutrients in there, PPMs at like 950 to 1,000, somewhere in that range. Or, yeah. And I checked the pH right at 6.0. Didn't have to add anything. Okay. So, don't always have to add this. I add this after I find out what everything else is going to look like. Okay. Now, before I got started here, I forgot. We're, we're kind of going at this a little bit backwards. But one thing I have to tell you is I have very, very clean water. I don't use RO water, and I don't filter my water. It comes out about 50 ppm right straight out of the faucet. 
So I have to add CalMag with every water. If I water one time without CalMag in my water, guaranteed the next two waterings, it will show up. It will go deficient on me in a heartbeat. So I got to put CalMag in my water every freaking time. Silicates. You notice? Potassium. Learn the hard way with this particular brand. Didn't have a problem with silicates before, and I went to this. I was really liking I was going to, and it turned my plants yellow. Why? Too much potassium in the plants. Plus, and the reason why I got too much potassium in the plants is because I was using too much. <laughs> it's supposed to be mixed one teaspoon per one gallon of water for hydroponics. For soil, it's one mil to two and a half mils to the gallon. It's like one half to one quarter of that of hydroponics. Why? Because it stays in the soil. It doesn't flush out of the soil like that. So that caused me issues. But hey, we all learn, right? So watch out with your, your silicates. And you gotta and if any of you out there aren't paying any attention, pay attention to these numbers. They do mean a lot. Especially when you start adding a lot of stuff to your water. You're gonna end up with all kinds of weird issues if you don't pay attention to that stuff. I've been there, done that. Okay. So now when you go to flush, that's kind of what I use. I just use whatever's cheap. Um, it doesn't it doesn't really matter all that much what you really use for flushing some guys don't use any flushing agent at all I only use a flushing agent when I think it's absolutely necessary like if I've got an over issue on my plants and I need to get that crap out of the soil and get it out now um, and that's part of where I'm going with all of this because I had an over issue on the, my last batch of clones I did I'm looking at them now and they're not they're, they're still not real happy with me but that's like I said I got a lot of issues going on there so there you have it. That is my nutrient lineup. And I've used a lot of things over time. I've used the extreme gardening stuff. I mean, that was one that everybody went on there for a while. Actually, we were all getting uh, uh, care packages from them, which is okay. Uh, I even got a care package, and I actually stuck with a couple of the products I liked from that system. So anyway, now on to bugs. What do you use to get rid of bugs? I've got three products I use to get rid of bugs. Where's that other little bottle at? This one here, a lot of people probably can uh, relate to. It's uh, quite a bit more inexpensive. Actually, it's about as expensive as all the other stuff, but it works real well. It's an all-natural product. Don't get that wrong, folks. All-natural, but it's still poison. All-natural because it's derived from neem oil, but it's still a miticide or a nemicide, so it's still poison to us and you still got to wear the gloves and wash your hands off and all that kind of stuff this stuff works fantastic for fungus gnats do a root drench at full strength bam gone fungus gnats can't live up to this stuff now i know um i think it was um who was it who is it darn i can't remember his name now um one guy out there what he does instead of doing a root drench he fills up a sprayer and just soaks down the top layer to get the adults. Uh, if you got adults in there, you got larva in the bottom where there's no air. You got larva in your soil, so you got to get them all. Sticky traps helps catch. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to use this in conjunction with sticky traps. The sticky traps will help to catch the adults. The root soak will ha help to catch the adults that are in the top of the soil that haven't gotten out yet or trying to get back in. And then it will soak down and get the little shits down in the bottom. And if there's any eggs or anything like that. So, and if you need to, I have never had to use more than two applications. Usually one is good at full strength. But uh, of course, you definitely want to use a wetting agent with this. A wetting agent will allow you to go down to half to three quarters strength and still get the same potency. But what the wetting agent does is, like I said, it breaks down the surface tension. So it wets down everything helps it get into every little tiny nook and cranny okay so there now ah uh, now the other motherfucking bugs that are a bastard mites well actually they're not a they're not a bastard i can get rid of mites real quick this floor mite floor mite one mil to two and a half mils per gallon and usually one dose of this will take care of your mite issues but I understand I should probably do two to three of these and the reason why is this the first dip or spray will get the um, adults 
and any uh, hatched lar or anything that's hatched. Then you still got your eggs to deal with. And once the eggs hatch, you got to kill them little shits too. So if he uses two to three times, you guaranteed you wipe them completely out, get rid of them, get rid of their eggs, and it's never a problem with that after that unless you unless you get them again. The only problem with this stuff is it doesn't kill other bugs that you might have problems with. Okay? Like thrips. Thrips are bad in Colorado. I use a Dr. Doom bug bomb. It's naturally occurring pyrethrian, and the freaking bugs can't stand the stuff. They die. Okay? Works very well. A uh, small $10 can bomb in my room. Boom! Gone. One application and the thrips are gone. But unfortunately in Colorado, because the thrips are bad, i got to really watch it because you can get thrips again real easily. And then i got to bomb everything again. Uh, but it, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than this. The infamous Eagle 20. Got powdery mildew? This will nip it in the bud. <laughs> Pun intended. Um, I have a little powdery mildew and flour now, so guess what i got to do? I use this because my... Uh, my banana kush, unfortunately, she's kind of powdery mildew prone. Not sure why that is. Um, I think it's more, from my research on powdery mildew, it has more to do with the environment than anything else, and that's why it happens. So when you get powdery mildew, you need something strong enough to take it all the way systemic. Kill it right down to the roots. Eagle 20 EW is the shit. Okay? This will get rid of any mold, any fungus, any bacteria, anything like that is growing on your plants or in your plants and it will stay on your plants for up to like 30 days. Just don't do any foliar feeding while you're out there. Same thing goes with the floor mite. Stays on your plants up to 30 days um, as long as you don't foliar feed. Now this stuff is uh, floor mite and this Eagle 20 are very, very expensive. Only buy these if you have to and hopefully if you can, you can get them in smaller jars. Now another one you want to get if you want a good kill every freaking bug there possibly could be avid i don't have any it's extremely expensive just like these two um when i got this i had mites and thrips um i was able to and i had some powdery mildew my banana kush so i was able to take care of the powdery mildew then the mites then i had to bomb to get rid of the freaking uh thrips because th these two weren't doing any good um azimax i understand will work good for thrips i use it once for thrips i saw no improvement works great for fungus gnats but i haven't seen it work for um uh, thrips now it's also supposed to work for spider mites i haven't used it on spider mites use that i, I got the floor mite it kills them dead and shit why not just use it i got it very expensive use it you know this stuff uh if i bought this this one container compared to this this is twenty dollars for this little container right here this container here was over a hundred this was over a hundred. Actually, these two here were about a hundred each, somewhere in that neighborhood. So very, very expensive stuff, but it works very, very well. Can't beat it. So I guess that's going to do it for today. On this stuff here, I will get back to you later. Oh, 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 oh. I even tried this. I even tried this. Let's let's swing on over here. I got a few other items over here, just for you guys that want to know. I've even tried regular neem oil. Yeah, extremely mixed results. Okay. Um, oh, at one point I even tried a powdered rooting hormone. This stuff actually worked pretty good. If you guys out there want to don't want to spend a shitload of money on on rooting hormones and stuff like this, and you want to try a powder, this uh, root one actually worked real good. I, I started off with, it and it was only like, uh, yeah, it was seven dollars for this little thing right here. No, unlike forty for this thing here of, uh, or twenty or thirty or something like that for this big bottle of, uh, was this four ounces? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 250 milliliters, 250 milliliters of Clonex. You know, um, got, some of you guys, you know, we got to want to do stuff cheap, so we try to find the best we can for the best money, and that's what I've had to do over time. Okay, um, and at one time I even used uh, some ginormous, and I didn't, I didn't even like the way that worked out. You know, uh, Serenade, stay the hell away from Serenade. Um, I used Serenade once, kill the plant. I don't use that anymore. I got a big bottle that'll be used outside. For powdery mildew on squash plants or something out there, we've had problems there. Um, uh, just like uh, this stuff here, I use this for um, bugs and stuff that crawl around the inside of my basement. Uh, this will get rid of just about any freaking bug you can possibly think of, spiders and all that, you know, and all that creepy crawly crap in my basement that I, I have issues with. 
that kind of thing. So there we go on that. Okay, so uh, that's the update on that. Oh, 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 one other thing, one other thing. If I ever have to do pH up, I go all natural. Very, very cheap. Baking soda. Works well. Okay, I shall talk to you all later. Create peace. Cultivate cannabis.